Welcome to AETCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today we are going to discuss a case of dog bite. Okay. 34 year old male patient came to the ER with alleged history of bite on his left hand. Uh, on initial assessment, the patient was conscious and oriented. Primary survey, his airway was patent. He was uh, talking in full sentences. There were no pooling of secretions. On breathing, his uh, respiratory rate was 18 per minute and his uh, saturation was 98% in room air. On auscultation, there were bilateral air entry present and no added sounds. Uh, circulation, his BP was uh, 130 by 90 millimeter of mercury and heart rate was 98 per minute. All peripheral pulses were palpable. What else you have to add in the circulation, especially in a trauma case? So airway you told, airway there was no pooling of secretions, airway was patent. Okay. Uh, that is all. In, in this patient that is enough. Breathing also, respiratory rate, um, saturations you have mentioned, then bilateral air entry, then rest of things. Circulation, one more thing you have to add. What are things? Heart rate, uh, blood pressure, pressure, then capillary refill time. Okay. That should be added. Mm -hmm. Then in this case, what important thing? what is the most important thing? We have to look for circulation, we have to look for any active bleeding. So, he is having dog bite. Mm -hmm. So, any active bleeding that should be checked. And mm -hmm. if at all and there is an active bleeding, you will have to give compression over that area. Okay. Uh, uh, this, uh, his GCS was uh, E4, V5, M6. Mm -hmm. On exposure, patient was having a small uh, lacerated wound on the dorsal aspect of his left hand in between the uh, little and the ring finger, the mm. interdigital space. Okay. It was uh, very small, it was two mil uh, 3 millimeter into 2 millimeter. Um, there was active bleed. Okay. So, we will have to also tell about the GCS mm. you have already mentioned, mm. you will have to uh, tell about the pupil asymmetry, mm. then the temperature of the patient yes. and also we will have to mention mm. about the GRBS also. Okay. 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 So, um, there was a small laceration. So, what category of dog bite is it? Category 3. Um, category three. 3. So, what are the categories of dog bite? Ma'am, there are 3 categories. Mm. Category 1. Can you be a little bit louder? Oh, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, there are 3 categories. Ma'am, um, category 1, uh, there is uh, uh, the there is just uh, like when we are feeding or uh, there are this licks on the um, uh, intact skin. Okay. Uh, category 2, there are abrasions but there is no bleed. Mm. Um, category 3, there are transdermal uh, um, uh, multiple or single transdermal wounds are can be present. Ma'am, there can licks on bro uh, uh, broken, broken skin, skin. Mm. and like any ma'am contact with mucosal surface. Mm. Mm. And also exposure to bat. Bat oh, exposure yes. to bat is always category three. Okay. Okay. So mm. this is category three. Yes. Okay. Mm. Then how did you proceed? Yes, ma'am. Since it was a category three wound, um, first we did uh, we wound management. We cleaned it with water and soap. Uh, and then, ma'am, uh, we uh, uh, we gave him immunoglobulins as well as uh, um, rabies vaccine. So, uh, in the primary survey, the most important thing to be addressed in a dog bite case is two things. One is the circulation, which we already mentioned, active bleeding. Other one is the pain. So, in the disability, you will have to ask the patient what his pain score is. So, there are different pain scores. Uh, in children, we will be using the facial expressions. Whereas in adult, we can ask the patients, can you grade your pain mm -hmm. from 0 to 10, with the 10 being the most severe most. Mm -hmm. So, ask the pain, then address mm -hmm. the pain. If he is if he is able to tolerate oral mm -hmm. paracetamol or mm -hmm. any oral analgesic, that will be enough. You don't have to unnecessarily put an IV cannula. Mm -hmm. So, give analgesics. Mm -hmm. Then if you told it is actively bleeding, mm -hmm. so give compressions. So, most important thing is to prevent infection is to wash with soap and water. Yes. So, uh, so immediate first action should be wash mm -hmm. and if it is uh, still mm -hmm. there is active bleeding, mm -hmm. you come, uh, give direct compression. Okay. okay. Then we will be focusing on the rest of the things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, it is category 3. three. So, uh, what are, are you planning to give? Ma'am, we will be giving uh, immunoglobulin and, as well as vaccine. Vaccine. Yes, so, uh, how, what do you know about vaccine? Ma'am, uh, the vaccines uh, we give on uh, like we can give intradermal as well as intramuscular mm. the intramuscular schedule is ma'am on day 0 3 7 14 and 28 mm. um, uh, that is doses 0.5 ml, ml. Yes. 0 0.5 ml. ml that is a rabies vaccine rabies. then intradermal uh, intradermal ma'am we give on uh, for, we give on 4 um, uh, 0 3 7 28. 28. So, uh, the, the sites, 14th day uh, is not given. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And there are two sites, 0 0.1 ml mm. 
Mm. Um, Intra dermal okay, okay. Mm. Then, when will you give this vaccine? Category mm. category uh, three and category two. Category three and two. Okay. Yes, mm. Then, then you will have to give a plan on giving yes, immunoglobulin. Mm. When will you plan on giving immunoglobulin? And when there is active bleed. Uh, present or uh, category three by category, category three, three and category three. Category three. Yes. Okay. So, um, how do you give, what are the types of immunoglobulin available? Ma'am, we can go for um, human recombinant immunoglobulin, mm. and ma'am, we can also go for monoclonal antibody that is available now. Okay. Mm. Uh, so, ma'am, uh, if you are giving uh, human recombinant immo immo uh, immunoglobulin, and the dosage would be um, twenty international units per kg body weight. Okay. Uh, ma'am, the uh, the immunoglobulin is to be um, given uh, in, given in such a way that it infiltrates the wound uh, subcutaneously. So, how much will one ampule contain? Um, an immunoglobulin, one ampule, three hundred units. Uh, three, it will contain three hundred national units. units. So, yes, we have to calculate based yes. on the patient's body weight, and yes. we'll have to give half in the uh, wound site. Wound site, and, and the rest uh, you can give distally. I am distilled to the wound site. So, IM. make sure that if you are planning to give a vaccine in one yes. side, make yes. sure that this is given far yes. away from yes. the. Uh, vaccine site. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, then what about the other thing? Another one is the monoclonal antibody. Uh, before monoclonal, mm -hmm. we have the ERIG also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. ERIG, ERIG uh, which will be uh, which is having a tendency for yeah. allergic reactions yes, and, uh, and it is free in government hospitals. Yes, so we can give either that or we can give the monoclonal. Yes. What is monoclonal antibody? Um, uh, uh, yeah, dose. Uh, dose is uh, three point three international units into per kg uh, body weight. Mm. Mm, so, uh, well, how um, much does an ampule contain? It contains uh, 100 units. 100 units. 100 so, units. you will have to give at least 2 or 3. three units. Yes. So, yes. similar to the um, uh, immunoglobulin, mm. you'll, you'll half should be given in the local uh, area and half should be given in the IM, IM area. Yes. Okay. Then, we will also be giving him injection tetanus. Okay. Uh, and uh, so injection tetanus and injection rabies uh, on the schedule. Uh, rabies according to schedule yeah. and TT according to schedule. Yeah. So, when will you plan on giving TT to a patient with bite? Ma'am, uh, will. Ma'am, if there is soiling of the wound, uh, ma'am, then okay. we'll so give in it. all the bites, we'll usually only, we will yeah. have to give, give tetanus. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, in which all other conditions will you give tetanus vaccine? TT. Leave this case. Oh, ma'am, any cuts, any injury. Uh, any injury should oh. be given? No, ma'am. Uh, like um, contamination, like uh, soil, soil, soil contamination. contamination. So, if it is contaminated wound, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. if it is a punctured wound, punctured with soil and manure, then mm -hmm. we have to give TT. Mm. Then other condition? Mm. Bites, bites, bites and scratches. You will mm. have to give then. Mm. Then uh, any. Conditions which is uh, secondary to the injury, if the patient is have, showing some features of sepsis, we'll have, you will have to give. Hmm? Okay. Then open fractures, okay. open fractures, okay. uh, you will have to give. Okay, and uh, these are the tetanus prone wounds. Okay. 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 Now other category is there high risk tetanus, high risk of tetanus. This is prone wound. There is some condition which is high mo high risk. Okay. So these are areas of tissues which is having extensive uh, destruction to the skin subcutaneous tissue and the lower layer so that means a uh, that means a very big laceration or an evulsed wound or something like that mm -hmm. and if at all the patient is having um, the wound which is very much contaminated with soil and manure not like a puncture wound extensive devascularization and devitalization is there that one Mm -hmm. And one more thing is, uh, if the patient presents with more than six hours of the wound, mm -hmm. okay. then then also we will have to con uh, consider it as high risk. Okay. okay. Then uh, will you give TT for um, antibody antibiotics for this patient? Um, Ma'am, we can consider giving uh, uh, antibiotics for this patient. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We, you it will have to give antibiotics. You will have to give antibiotics for this patient. Yes. Okay. So, uh, uh, when all will you give antibiotics? In which all injury? So, bites we have already mm -hmm. told. So, any human bite or animal bite or cat bite, whatever it may be, you will have to give antibiotics. Then, when you when will you give antibiotics in injuries? Mm -hmm. 
patient is having like uh, when there are uh, signs of inflammation or uh, pain or um, antibiotics in in small abrasions and all will you give no 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 so you will have to give antibiotics if at all you are planning to do a suturing primary mm-hmm. suturing mm-hmm. or if at all the patient requires a surgical management mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then you will have to give antibiotics mm-hmm. then whether it is contaminated or whether the wound was contaminated you will have to plan on giving antibiotics mm-hmm. then if the wound was in the hand this mm-hmm. patient was in the hand yes. so any wound in the hand or in the genitalia or in the foot mm-hmm. the circulation will be less mm-hmm. so in this area you will have to give antibiotics mm-hmm. and any wounds that is involving the joint mm-hmm. then also you'll have to consider mm-hmm. giving antibiotics okay uh, and suppose a patient is very much immunocompromised and if the patient is having any diabetes any this condition mm-hmm. also we'll have to plan on giving prophylactic antibiotics to prevent infection okay mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. Uh, we gave him an uh, amoxicillin plus uh, clavulanic acid okay okay so uh, you we have mentioned about giving tetanus immunoglobulin yes. then um, rabies vaccine then previous immunoglobulin ah uh, rabies Im- uh, immunoglobulin, immunoglobulin then antibiotics, antibiotics. then uh, so this patient had a bite yes, so ma'am. what else you you will have to rule out and before discharging what all things you will have to assess again mm-hmm. you told that there is local examination there was mm-hmm. an abrasion mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what else we will have to see or is there any uh, swelling or like uh, raise of temperature uh, so how will you examine that limb B- before uh, discharging you will have to document the limb findings and any other injuries to the limb so mm-hmm. how will you document that so, so how will you examine an upper limb so mm-hmm. first you will have to look for the inspection as you told mm-hmm. any active bleeding mm-hmm. was there or any <coughs> other swellings or any other deformity whether mm-hmm. it is present or not mm-hmm. then you will have to palpate and see we don't know how much depth it is actually a dog bite is usually like a puncture wound so <laughs> we don't know how much depth it has went so we will have to document regarding the patient's um, t- t- any tenderness so we will have to touch each of the patient's Uh, joints like the proximal the uh, distal and also the metacarpophalangeal joints you will have to palpate and look for any tenderness mm-hmm. okay so we need to see whether the joint of this patient was involved or not mm-hmm. especially it, if it was in the web space metacarpophalangeal joint whether it is involved or not that you will have to see then we will have to examine for the sensation this area web space usually it will not be innervated by a major nerve but if it was in the anatomical snuff box or near to the wrist and all the major nerves that means the ulna nerve median nerve or radial nerve can be involved so you will have to check the sensation also how will you check the sensation man will mm. ask him to close his close eyes, eyes and eye. then will ask him to tell if uh, like can it you feel um, will touch mm. man will not tell him will will instruct him close mm. his eyes will try to touch if you feel sensation just show us Verbalize. a sign yeah. okay okay so you need to check the sensation mm-hmm. around the distribution and also you will have to check the power also mm-hmm. we don't know whether it is some tendon or anything is injured or not or mm-hmm. the local nerve supply is affected or not so uh, so next we will have to check the power power of the small uh, fingers okay mm-hmm. so how will you assess that then uh, will you ask him to uh, we will give a counter uh, force and ask him to uh, yes. uh, we yeah. can do different way so okay. either you can ask the patient to, to hold, hold our finger, hand yeah. so that is the uh, power yes. of the upper limb yeah. or we can ask the patient to take something that the pincer yeah. grass yeah. can be checked then we will ha- you will have to see the muscles of the hands are working or not so yeah. in order to see for that you can ask for the muscle uh, yeah. action so Uh, flexor digitorum superficialis it usually supplies where superficialis supplies the proximal interphalangeal joint so how will you examine that uh, so you can ask if you are planning so if the injury is here and you want to see if the patient's flexor digitorum superficialis is functioning or not so you can uh, hold all other fingers and ask the patient to bend this finger so if the patient is able to bend that means flexor digitorum superficialis is normal mm-hmm. similarly if you want to 
check the functioning of any other fingers you can hold the rest of the fingers and ask them to bend <coughs> okay um, but it will not be easy for the uh, uh, index finger index finger is little bit uh, independent so in the index finger you can hold on to the metacarpophalangeal joint and ask the patient to bend okay, okay. then that is for the flexor digitorum superficialis for checking the profundus flexor digitorum profundus supplies the distal uh, interphalangeal gel joint so how will you examine that you immobilize the proximal interphalangeal joint and ask them to bend so the patient will be bending that okay <laughs> then you will have to see for the isolated nerve supply if it is affected or not <laughs> so uh, for that you can check the um, dorsal inrosia you can check for the abduction of the fingers and see whether that is working or not if the thumb or the little finger is affected you will have to check for the abduction adduction and rest of the power of the uh, both the fingers also and that's that only completes the full evaluation we can give the management for the bite but we will have to see whether any tendon or any joint or any uh, bone is affected or not okay so if at all you are suspecting any abnormalities you can you will have to plan on taking an x-ray or if at all you are feeling that any muscle is weak then you will have to involve the uh, plastic surgery department also okay so you will have to document that also and then only planning on discharging the patient and uh, you will have to give adequate dates you, we have given only the first dose so you will have to uh, uh, educate him and also give the dates for the 3rd 7th 14th and 28th day vaccine okay do you have any doubts okay thank you